Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit, I'm Jay Formal, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. Yes, I am restarting. I made a lot of design mistakes that lowered my FPS, and besides, I missed recording the first part of Age of Engineering anyway. So I am starting anew. Age of Engineering is a tech-only mod pack, and it's also expert mode. Progression is divided into roughly 15 ages, covering different mods or parts of mods. Don't mind me, just scouting the terrain. Super shorts get to the meat of a video. No fluff, no waste of time, just the important bits. Like, for example, picking the best world to play in. Surprise! Never mind. First, a few disclaimers. I play in peaceful mode, but instead of cheating in mob items, I've created special recipes for them, which are approved by the mod pack maker. I'll post those in the description. I've also added two extra mods. Just enough calculation, which lets you calculate the cost of recipes, and persistent bits, a much safer chunk loader than FTB utilities. Crafting tables can be turned into crafting stations, which retain their inventory, and let you shift left-click items into the grid. They also let you access the inventory of a chest. Mining cobblestone gives you the achievement for age zero. I'm done with auto-jump. Furnaces are easy. You can turn wood into 16 sticks. Actually, additions all-in-one tools are exactly what their name says. You can't turn wood into charcoal directly, but coke bricks are significantly more expensive. You can't smelt ores directly either. Since I'd rather not waste wood on fuel, you can turn granite into stone by making stone slabs. Why do I need stone bricks? For the mining portal. You need 14 portal frames, which are crafted with a mining multi-tool. While I went to grab flint, I also got clay, sand, and gravel, which I'll need for a smeltery. Mining multi-tool, 14 portal frames. The whole portal frame has to be built. Right-click with a mining multi-tool to turn it on. Break flax in the world for string, and with that I can craft a white bag from bagginses. Shift right-click to change the mode. Crafting table on a stick does exactly what it says. Now I get the actual additions manual. The bagginses bag picks things up instantly, no matter how far away. You can tell how many times I recorded that. In the mining world, it's always daytime. Coal! Took long enough. I ought broke, but I can use my crafting table and a stick to make it again. Y level 42 is the best place to find tin, copper, charged surdus, surdus quartz, and sapphire. Here's some charged surdus quartz right now. My bag is full, so you'll notice all this cobblestone lying on the ground. No more magnet. Here's some osmium for mechanism, and resonating ore from an offshoot of RF tools. At level 28, you can best find gold, silver, emerald, black quartz, sapphires, rubies, osmium, lead, bauxite, and uranium. Lava! I'll need this for the smeltery. At Y level 13, you can best find redstone, diamonds, gold, lapis, emeralds, iron, ruby, osmium, lead, resonating ore, bauxite, and nickel. There's not much use mining any lower. A handy FTB utils trash can lets you insert items and deletes them once you escape out of your inventory. More useless blocks. FTB utilities adds a home and set home command, which lets you set several homes and teleport to them. I try not to abuse it too much. Time to make a smeltery. Tiny coal smelts one item at a time. While we wait for grout, let's set up tinkers. Part builder, pattern chest, stencil table, and tool station. Done. Usefully, the crafting station connects to all of these items. An unfired clay bucket smelts into a clay bucket, which can only be used once to carry lava. Sear tank, smeltery controller, casting table, casting basin, a smeltery drain, two smeltery faucets, 17 seared bricks, and one last drain. Let's temporarily construct it right here. The smeltery is made from seared bricks and all the other blocks I showed you. The seared tank holds lava, which can be used as fuel. Smeltery drains let you access the smeltery's fluids. You can right-click faucets to drain those fluids. I'll grab some lava with my clay bucket and place it in the smeltery. As you can see, the clay bucket is now lost. Now I can melt down iron. While I wait, I'll make some patterns, which you can put into the pattern chest, and use in the part builder. I'm making a paper binding, a stone pickaxe head, and a stone tool rod. I'll melt down some clay and some more iron, and some copper and tin. Molten clay lets you make temporary casts. They're only usable once, but I only need it once, for an iron pickaxe head. Look at it melt. Uh, harden. I don't want to record that again. I'll also make a tool rod cast, and fill it with bronze, which has a 1.1 durability modifier. Now I can make my pickaxe. Its traits right now are dense, magnetic, and writable. The less durability I have, the slower it'll go down. Items will be automatically attracted to me, even if my bag is full. And I'll be able to apply an extra modifier, which I'll explain when I start modifying things. I've cast myself an iron block. Trust me, I have absolutely no idea why it looks like that. And with it, I can make my first actual bucket. Next stop, nether. Iron bars, and dry fluid tank, which is portable. Notably, the Tinker's Construct Sear Tank is also portable. Don't worry, all the fluid data is stored in the controller. Lava for days. Can't forget redstone. Look at all that lava. And those diamonds. I can make obsidian in a Tinker's Construct Smeltery by putting lava in water. 
You can put the liquid in by right-clicking on the smeltery drain, 10 pieces of obsidian, and a very carefully placed nether portal. I don't necessarily need to do this now, but I'd rather a source of lava that I can just teleport to. But since flint and steel need steel, and I don't have steel, I'll just light it the old-fashioned way. Waiting. Meanwhile, I'll make aluminum brass with bauxite and copper, which will let me cast permanently. If you happen to have an extra seared brick, you can use a seared brick to make the ingot cast. But I was very precise in my calculations, unfortunately, so I have to use iron. Watch it go. And I've got an ingot cast. And my nether portal is lit. To store these casts, another pattern chest. Now for a pickaxe head cast. And an obsidian head, which I can use to replace my iron pickaxe head, and therefore mine cobalt. The nether. Now that I have cobalt and ardite, I can really start upgrading my pickaxe. Ardite and cobalt mix into manulin, so I don't want to put them both at once. As a tool rod, Ardite has a 1.4 multiplier on durability. If you repair a tool before you replace its materials, then the tool will have full durability without you having to repair it with the new repair material. Turns out, Ardite tool rods decrease the durability, so I'm going to save that until I can figure out how I want to make my pickaxe. And that's it for today's episode. Next episode, I'll work in a coke oven and a base and get into the first age. I realize that I'm technically not at the point for the nether portal in progression, but I was already done with the nether portal by the time I realized. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!